We want to start with checking our water. When you first open it, until you get it relatively balanced, you want to check it as often as possible, possibly every day. Um, and once you get it dialed in, you can stretch that to maybe once a week. Now you can take them, the sample to the pool store, but it's better in my opinion to have a good test kit right at home and do the testing yourself. I personally use the Taylor test kit, the K2006. That's my personal favorite. Um, I'll put a little picture right here for you. Um, I think that one's the most accurate. They do also have automated testing systems such as Sutro, which is that, and other devices that will check some of the basic levels for you. But in my opinion, getting a good test kit and testing it weekly and daily in the beginning is your best option. When taking the water sample, it's really important to take the water sample away from returns, take it somewhere, you know, maybe in the deep end of the pool. You want to go down and scoop the water about 18 inches below the water surface to get a really accurate uh, sample. And we're going to start with our alkalinity. So alkalinity is the first thing I always suggest balancing. And we want to target between 80 and 120 with an ideal shot of, of about 100. Okay, so let's target 100. The ranges are good, but when we start talking about LSI, and we'll get into that down the road, um, we want more of target numbers. So let's target alkalinity at 100. And alkalinity is pretty much your buffer for your pH, which is what we'll do next. But if your alkalinity is all out of whack, your pH is going to be a seesaw, and it's going to be up and down, up and down. So let's get your t alkalinity in check first. Aim for 100 and we'll go from there. The way to raise your alkalinity is sodium bicarbonate, which all we know is just simple baking soda. I like to put it in when nothing is running. I pour it all in the same spot, let it sit on the bottom, let those um, carbonates just kind of infuse around, you know, and, and mix in the water. And that is our first step. After your alkalinity, we're going to test and adjust your pH. The pH uses a phenol red, you do five drops, hold it up to the light, and you match it up to the best possible color. We want to aim for 7.4 to 7.6. I like to be 7.4, 7.5 right around there. Um, 7.45 right in the middle is even better. The pH of the human eye is right around 7.4, so we want to shoot for that. Um, and the skin as well is, is 7.4, so let's aim for that area. And any higher than that, your chlorine is going to be too lethargic. Your water might start scaling. Any lower than that, and you're going to have problems with corrosion and uncomfortable swimming and, and, and that kind of stuff. So pH is really important. When your eyes start burning, it's a good indication that your pH is off. So alkalinity, then pH. We can adjust the pH with soda ash, which is sodium carbonate. That's what bring, brings it up. To bring it down, we can use pH down, which is a dry powdered acid, or the simplest way is to use muriatic acid. And that stuff's really nasty. It, it'll burn your nose, so take um, a lot of caution when doing that. Wear gloves, pre-dilute pre it in, in a bucket of water first. You always go water first, then acid, never acid, then water, because it can splash back and burn you. This is nasty stuff, so be careful with it. After pH, we're going to look at your calcium hardness. Okay, when testing your calcium hardness, we want to determine what your surface of your pool is. Okay, the ideal range for calcium hardness is right around 200 to 400. We like it to be a little bit on the lower end, closer to 250 if you have a vinyl pool. If you have a um, gunite or plaster pool, I like to be right around 350. Um, some 400, some people say is acceptable. I personally think 350 is where you want to shoot. But all these calcium, the calculations you want to put into an LSI calculator and that'll kind of tell you your number and um, how corrosive or how scaling your water is. And LSI plays a huge factor, and calcium plays a huge factor within LSI. So you always input all of these chem levels that we're talking about today into that LSI calculator, and you're gonna get a number between negative 0.3 and 0.3. You wanna be within that range. Um, so, but again, if you have a vinyl pool, you can keep your calcium a little bit lower, closer to 200, 250. 
If you have a plaster pool, keep it a little, right about 350 or so. And the only way to raise your calcium is by adding calcium chloride to the water. The only way to lower it is by draining and adding fresh water. Now we're talking about your sanitizer, whether you're a salt pool or a traditional chlorine pool, they're still using chlorine. Okay, so that is your sanitizer. We need to test and we want to look for your free chlorine. Free chlorine is the good chlorine. I go into depth in this in another video, but there's three different types. There's free chlorine and then there's combined chlorines. When free chlorine starts to pair up and gets burned off by bad stuff, it turns into combined chlorines, which I call the bad chlorine. You put these two together and you make your total chlorine. So that's your three types. Free chlorine, combined chlorine, total chlorine. We want the free chlorine to be between one and three, depending on your cyanuric acid level, let's shoot for say two to three. Um, and again, as we know, and I've discussed in other videos, cyanuric acid level also affects the effectiveness of the chlorine. So the higher your cyanuric acid, the higher you need to keep that free chlorine. So if you're not sure about that, hop over to my other video about cyanuric acid and learn up on that because that takes a huge role. And again, we test free chlorine first. And there are tests that can test for combined chlorine. The K2006 will test for it. And you add those two together to get your total chlorine. We always, always, always want to keep sufficient sanitizer or chlorine in the water. Keep it above one part per million, ideally two, at all times. And that will keep your algae and, and your contaminants at bay. Lastly, even if you have a salt pool or your traditional chlorine pool, they both still need cyanuric acid or stabilizer. Some people call it conditioner. We need to test for this. And this is my personal opinion is you want to shoot for 30. 30 parts per million, okay? Ideally, 30, if you get 30 to 50, that's okay. I like to stay below 50. The higher your cyanuric acid, the more free chlorine you need to keep in your water to rid the water of algae and to keep algae away. Um, cyanuric acid is added to the water to help protect it from the sun. If you live in Texas, Florida, a state that gets a ton of sun all the time, you want to keep it, you know, closer to 50, but um, keep an eye on that. And as you keep adding trichlor or stabilized chlorine, that's going to keep raising your cyanuric acid up. And the only way to adjust your cyanuric acid is to um, drain and refill. That's it. There are some methods coming out that are kind of guiding us towards a way to lower your CYA without draining, but we're not quite there yet. Last but not least, shocking your pool. I touch on this in more detail in the chlorine basics video, but you shock your pool when your combined chlorines gets above 0.2 parts per million. So keep free chlorine high, keep combined chlorines low. If combined chlorines, the bad chlorine gets high, you shock to lower them. Okay, shock to get rid of them. And we shock with either cow hypo, we shock with liquid chlorine. There's many ways you can shock. But again, shock's not a product, it's a verb, it's an action. We are shocking the pool and what we're doing is raising our free chlorine really high and eliminating all of those combined chlorines. So that is how you shock. Um, and again, temperature, you measure your temperature with a thermometer. All of these parameters I just told you all go into an LSI calculator. And the LSI tells you how caustic or how scale forming your water is. You need to know that. That's really important. Aim for zero, but from negative 0.3 to 0.3 is acceptable. The Arenda app is fabulous at this. There's tons of apps out there that do this, but you really need to know your LSI. Test for all the things I just told you about, and then you can go back in, input the numbers, and get your LSI, and that'll keep staining away. That'll keep corrosion away, scaling, all that. All right, so that's a really good measure of how healthy your water is. I hope that this kind of gives you a broad overview of how to test your water. Again, I recommend the K2006. I recommend testing weekly. And early on, when you first open your pool, I recommend testing daily. Um, don't be intimidated. It's easy to do, along with your, your daily maintenance of checking the baskets, the skimmer baskets, the pump baskets, keeping the water level correct, brushing every couple of days at least once a week, skimming the top. These are all things that you do to keep your pool sparkling clear 
and it's really not that difficult once you start realizing how the chemicals work together, how alkalinity affects the pH, how the pH level affects the chlorine, it all starts to click. Um, but know what those parameters are, where we want to be, shoot for a target, and you'll be just fine. Reach out to me anytime if you have questions. Always happy to help. Message me on Facebook. Join our Facebook group, which is Pool Care Tips, Tricks, and Help. We've got over 5,000 members, tons of professionals on there that, that would love to help you out. So join us, ask away, be happy to help you. Okay, John Rigby signing off. Thank you.